I'm glad to see all of you who are interested in history and reenactment. My name is Daniel and today we will talk about summer headgear and head protection in the Red Army. Main headgear of the Red Army during warm season were caps and side caps. Most common were side caps. They were introduced in December 1935 and were given to most of the personnel of the Red Army. So, what do we know about side caps? The structure of the side cap was pretty simple. In addition to the main part, it had such ears. Due to the regulation, it was not allowed to put them down. However, you can sometimes see soldiers with ears down on the photos of prisoners of war Red Army soldiers. The reason was to protect neck and ears from cold. On the side caps have been attached cockades, five-pointed stars with sickle and hammer. In the beginning of the war they were red and enabled. However, with the beginning of the war on the Soviet territory it was decided to change these stars for regular stamped colored in green. First of all, the reason was that the red star unmasked soldiers. It was literally a red point on the forehead of a soldier, what simplified aiming for Germans. Moreover, it was much cheaper and faster to produce stamped green stars than the red ones. Side cap was worn in a such way. If it spread out on a soldier's head, his battle bros could make 18 plus jokes. <laughs> Further, we are going to speak about caps. In the Red Army, not only officers had caps. First of all, privates wore caps with parade casual uniforms. Such caps, just like the officers' ones, differed according to the color of crown, band and edging. For example, infantry had crown in green color, band and edging in crimson. Also, caps with uniform used privates and NCOs of different structures of NKVD. Internal troops had a cap with blue crown, red band and crimson edges. Do not forget! about headgear, which was not so common like caps or side caps, but also has been used in the Red Army. For example, in 1938, a Panama hat has been introduced for hot regions. The Panama hat had a cloth star on which an enameled cockade was being attached. And for women in the Red Army, there was a blue parrot. The variety of headgear in the Red Army was pretty big. But it is also interesting to talk about what protected soldiers' heads from splinters and stray bullets. During the war, soldiers wore three types of the helmets. S-Sha 36, 39 and 40. Numbers in the names show the years of introduction in the army. The Second World War, Red Army soldiers faced in S. Shah's 36 or so-called Halchingolkas. The name appeared after the Battle of Halchingol, where the helmet has been actively used. The legend says that in 1934, Marshal Budioni personally tested the example of the helmet by striking it with a sabre. Sesha 36 has been massively used till 1943. However, a small part of the Red Army soldiers still used this helmet on the Far East Front till the end of the war. This helmet had representative ears and blinder, which created big windage and closed view. That's why the army refused this helmet in future. From 1938, the development of new form of the helmet has started. 
The Italian M33 helmet was taken as an example. So firstly appeared C-39 or 3 Rivet in 1939 and S-40 or 6 Rivet in 1940. The last one will be the most massive and recognizable helmet of the Red Army. These helmets are still being used in some war conflicts. CSH-39 has not been produced so massively because of the complicated helmet liner. CSH-40 liner was much easier in production, that's why it was preferred. These two models got their unofficial names due to the amount of reverts on which the liner have been attached. CSH-39 had three rivets, so three rivet, and CSH-40 had six rivets. So, 6 rivet. Sasha 40 was being produced in 3 sizes, but the helmet liner could be fit for the necessary size. You need to untie the rope which connects the pillow of the liner. Choose the right size and tie it again. There is also a legend with this helmet that Budioni tested it, same as Sasha 36. When he took his saber for testing, one of the developers of the helmet smiled, because the weapon for testing was pretty unusual. However, Budioni noticed that an experienced cavalryman could cut a human in a half. When Budioni struck the helmet, nothing happened. Then he fired a Nagan revolver from 25 and 10 meters. The helmet was not damaged again. So, Budioni was very satisfied with it. And the last thing I would like to talk about is stars on the helmets. There were two types of stars. Early, star with wide lines, and late, star with narrow lines and cyclant hammer inside. In 1937, Red Star newspaper editoring got a letter from political instructor of the Filatov's 8th Rifle Division, in which he informs that the division got S-36 helmets with stars without cyclant hammer, and this could be a Trotskyism, because such stars deny the union of peasants and workers. He also decided that such stars had painted the enemies of the nation. Such painting was explained so that it is difficult to add sickle and hammer inside the star with wide lines. It will all form a big red star, which will unmask soldiers. So it was decided to make the lines on the star narrow, so that it would be possible to paint sickle and hammer inside. So early stars are also being called Trotskyist ones. However, in reality, not everywhere early stars have been refurbished for the late ones. Everything depended on the integrity of the political instructors. Here's the main information about Red Army headgear. I hope it was interesting and informative for you. If so, like, subscribe and leave comment. So, bye and protect your head.